And a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lloyd with the August 12th edition of the CBC Evening News. And our top story. Prime Minister Frondel Stewart says there is a need for stronger family units as the island battles an increase in crime and violence. He says weaker homes have led to problems in the schools and communities. I know that we like when things go wrong to, to target the police and to target the judiciary and so on. The truth is the police and the judiciary are at the output end of a process which begins at the input end with our homes, our schools, and our communities. And where there are failures at the input end, the output is bound to be what we are seeing. And Mr. Stewart was speaking during yesterday's full meeting of the Social Partnership at the Barbados Hilton. He defended his decision to broadcast that entire meeting live, saying that the public is in a better position to understand the challenges if they have all the facts from all the parties involved. Everybody is not going to agree with the government. Everybody is not going to agree with the private sector. Everybody is not going to agree with the labor movement. But at least the public has had a chance to see and to hear what was said in this room today, what was said by the governor of the central bank, so the, the public knows where we are, what was said by the director of finance and economic affairs, so the public now knows that the two committee reports were not put in 513, but that the reports are receiving the active consideration and attention of the government. But at the same time, the public has heard what are the continuing concerns of the labor movement, the continuing concerns of the private sector and in that context I think Barbados is the better off for all that has happened here today. The local economy has registered an estimated 2.2 percent growth during the first six months of this year and this is according to a report from the Central Bank of Barbados which has described the situation as an uneven performance. Acting Governor Cleveson Haynes says it was led by the tourism sector which grew by about 8 percent. Long stay arrivals are up 7.5%. Uh, there's been some decline in the average length of stay, but we've also had a, a very strong cruise season based on the statistics which we, we have received so far, uh, yielding an overall growth, as I said, of 8.5%. And our construction sector has also been fairly buoyant, growing at 4.3%, and that's largely because. Of, of the Sandals project. So there's, there's a lot more capacity, I think, within the construction sector, which is um, currently being uh, underutilized. And therefore, and that relates to the fact that a number of investment projects which we have identified have been delayed, and therefore we are not being able to generate uh, the growth that we would have wanted. Mr. Haynes says that at the end of April, inflation was up 3.2%, and several factors, including a rebound in oil prices, were responsible. Our fuel imports have gone up about 44%, largely because of the, the rise in oil prices. We've also seen, uh, in recent months, uh, an increase in food prices, particularly of vegetables and fish. And this seems to be shortages in juice. In other words, when you have shortages in the production of vegetables and, 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 and the catch of fish, then the price goes in the other direction. And that has uh, gone up quite significantly and therefore has helped to pull the, the inflation rate up. And of course, there would have been the initial impact of the NSRL when it was introduced uh, at 2%. When the Bell family from Dash Valley got together for a family reunion yesterday, they never imagined it would be the last time they would see one of their own alive. But that's the sad reality they woke up to this morning as news spread that 35-year-old Shane Bell was the island's latest road fatality. Sharika Griffith reports. Just a short distance separated Shane Bell from the place he's called home all his life. But he never made it there as the vehicle he was traveling in struck an embankment and overturned around 2 this morning. As news of his sudden death spread through the Dash Valley St. George community, family and neighbors reflected on the life of the young man who they could always count on to lend a helping hand. His uncle Henderson says he last saw Shane after 9 last night, when he left to go to an event in the Glebe. Shane is a very cool, nice, quiet person. 
you know, I travel. You like, you like enjoying life, you know, anything. You have to do anything, everything like that. But we were here yesterday with the family reunion, enjoying ourselves. And you leave my son and him, and in that interview, he went out, be a fest. The rest come back and I can see he get, he ain't get back. The deceased cousin Mario Bell says the two of them grew up together. He says even though they got up to mischief in their younger days, she ain't never ran afoul of the law. We two sisters, children, yeah, real close. Do a lot of things together around about, do all kinds of things together. Teach people fruit, so I think he was a good boy, bro. Never get into trouble in the court, nothing so. Get into trouble with this gun thing that I got in my place, he ain't in there, so. You know what I'm saying? Mario remembers his cousin as a jack of all trades. I was trying to paint the house for my car. And everything anybody in the family got, or he real talented with his hands. Never went to me and learned nothing, but he could get everything do. Plumbing, masonry, carpentry, anything. And he just come and just helped me break my nuts. Tell me, tell me, he's a soldier, you can't get any nuts break. So he was that so I felt right. And then he can't break them for me, but good boy, man. I cried and said yesterday last night, 2 o'clock at work, and now he can't cry no more, now I got more water. Another cousin, who's also named Shane Bell, has had to reassure several concerned people who have called to check on him. I had a shot this morning because everyone was called in the phone, if it was me or my cousin. But when and truly they don't know if I had a cousin named Shane Bell, but that was a shot. But Shane was, he was a good fellow, honestly. I never had a problem with him, nothing so. Bell and 24-year-old Michael Payne were passengers in a vehicle driven by 22-year-old Rashid Phillips. Police say Phillips suffered multiple injuries as a result of the accident, while Payne suffered a broken right arm and bruises to the head. They were both transported to the QEH for medical treatment. Police are asking anyone who may have witnessed the accident or who can provide information to assist with their investigations to contact them. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. And stay with us. We'll have more news after the break. From June 6 to 12th, Barbados hosted Phase 1 of Exercise Trade Winds 2017. It was the 33rd time that this regionally focused, multinationally planned exercise was held in the Caribbean. Watch this Barbados Government Information Service feature and see how this new approach to the exercise went and the troops from across the world as they took part in counter-terrorism, organized crime and humanitarian aid disaster response training exercises, both at sea and on land. Don't miss it, Monday, August 14th at 8.30 p.m. on this station. Administrative upgrades are being planned for the local justice system to make it more efficient for both staff and the public. Registrar of the Supreme Court, Madam Justice Barbara cook Aline, made the disclosure on the sidelines of the open day held at the Registration Department in Bridgetown. She says that lengthy delays and red tape can be addressed by initiatives like the sharing of data electronically with partner agencies. We talk a lot with the electoral office and just like a birth certificate and ID card immigration and passports and police and so on, the hospital and Ministry of Health with the certificates. So if you have an electronic link, things can happen faster. You have citizens coming out quicker to say what's happening. You can actually say how you put your policies in place based on the statistics. So we have plans in place, but they call for lots of money. But we are hoping that we can see it in the next estimates, at least not part of it, most of it. Now, the registration department is celebrating 130 years, and the open day allowed visitors a peek behind the scenes. Justice cook says a number of the daily operations will be improved with new electronic measures. And to improve efficiency, she also encourages the public to consider mediation for their legal matters. And mediation is a way of diverting you away from a trial, which saves money, time, costs, resources. So that's in place as well, and that would assist with any backlog we have instead of waiting to go to trial. You go to mediation, the time and date for that is faster than going through the court system. So we encourage persons to go to mediation. It's not moving as fast as we'd like it to move, but as you said, hesitation is something that's happening to the public and to the law and to the judiciary as well to make that more productive because it can really make a difference in the system. 
Regional stories now. In Guyana, the People's Militia has been re-established. President David Granger has announced that each capital town and administrative region in the country will have a unit of the Guyana People's Militia in order to help equip young people with critical skills. Royden James reports. The head of state made the announcement at the Colonel Mitchell Jungle at Amphibious Training School in the Asikib River. Mr. Granger said the training offers tremendous benefits to soldiers and civilians, particularly young people, keep them physically fit and provide them with valuable life skills that they will be able to put into practice in an operational setting. We believe in the strategy of total national defense, that is to say, we bring together all of the elements that our country could mobilize to protect our environment to protect our territoriality. We have a border of over 1,100 kilometers with Brazil. We have a border with over 800 kilometers with Venezuela and almost a similar length, over 800 kilometers with Suriname. This is a tremendous responsibility for a small country. The Commander-in-Chief explained that in addition to safeguarding the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity, the Guyana Defence Force also has a role of ensuring that the civil power is supported. 